So blood flow restriction training, something that's really caught the buzz in strength training and physiotherapy recently, but what is it and does it actually work? Let's dive in. Hey guys, Khalid here. Welcome back to Clinical Physio. So blood flow restriction training or BFR for short. This is a really unique way of strengthening muscles and is said to be particularly useful for individuals who, for whatever reason, may not be able to engage in the high intensity levels of strengthening needed to really build their muscle. So what kind of individuals might we be talking about here? Well, first of all, think injury. Someone who's just had a fracture, someone who's just had surgery, someone whose arm or leg has had to be immobilized in a cast or a boot, for example. Think of those who have a muscular disorder, perhaps something like sarcopenia, which is a natural loss in skeletal muscle as we get older. And then think of those who have conditions which means that it's more difficult for them to exercise. Someone who has cancer, for example. These are all examples of individuals where they won't be able to dive into really high level strengthening exercises, but we might be able to find a way for them to exercise and still build muscle. Okay, so what's BFR then? Well, imagine times where you've seen a nurse or a doctor taking blood from a patient or when a patient is bleeding and they're trying to stop blood bleeding further. You might find in these situations that a tourniquet or a cuff is applied to that patient around their arm or perhaps around their leg that aims to temporarily restrict the amount of blood going down towards that area. And it's the same with BFR training. An individual will have a tourniquet or a cuff around their upper arm or perhaps their upper leg so that the muscles being exercised don't get as much blood flow. Now, the theory here is that therefore, instead of having to work at let's say 70 to 80% of a patient's one rep max, this allows them to work at 30 to 40% of a patient's one rep max and still make strength gains. Interesting. But what's the science behind it? Well, I suppose the easiest example to compare it with is like long distance runners. We commonly hear of these individuals training at higher altitudes where oxygen availability is lower. This means they're able to create a high intensity environment to their training because the body now has to cope and adapt to training with less oxygen available. And so BFR training works on similar principles. By having less blood flow to the muscles, it means that less oxygen gets to those muscles during training. It means that we're able to create this higher stress or high intensity environment for those muscles to have to work in despite using lower weights. So it means for those patients who have had a fracture, for those patients who have more weakness and aren't able to lift those heavier loads, we can still create that high intensity environment needed to make muscle gains. And that is BFR training. So that's the theory. Does it actually work in practice? Well, one of the best pieces of evidence we have here is a systematic review and meta-analysis by Hughes et al. from 2017, Blood Flow Restriction Training in Clinical Musculoskeletal Rehabilitation. Link is in the description below if you wanna check it out. So they looked at 20 different studies in which BFR training was used amongst patients who had conditions such as ACL reconstruction, knee osteoarthritis, sarcopenia, and sporadic inclusion body myositis, which is a progressive muscular disorder where patients lose strength over time. Now, there were two key findings from this paper. The first was that heavy load training was more effective than BFR training. However, we're dealing with patients who can't necessarily get involved with heavy load training. And therefore, when they compared low load training with BFR, to low load training without BFR, there was a clear winner. BFR training was more effective in enabling patients to build more muscle strength. So this is great. It shows us that we have an option in BFR training for those patients who can't easily engage in that high level, high load intensity of exercises, whether it be because of an injury, a particular condition, or something I'm really interested to know about more, the role of BFR training in chronic pain. 
In physiotherapy, we see so many patients who have chronic pain and aren't able to engage in exercises as much. Is this an option we might be able to explore? Now, if you're a patient watching this, please be sure to check in and consult with your doctor, physiotherapist or appropriate trainer before getting involved in BFR training. And that's because there are natural contraindications that come with this. For example, if you have a really poor cardiovascular status or if you're at risk of DVTs. So please make sure you check that out. But otherwise, if you've enjoyed this video, please support us by smashing that like button, subscribe to our channel and check out more of our resources on Instagram at Clinical Physio or on our website, clinicalphysio.com. My name's Khalid. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon here on Clinical Physio.